I recently had the chance to try Kodak Eastman XX, aka Cinestill BWXX, and was really pleasantly surprised by it, so I wanted to talk a little bit about it today and share just some random neighborhood shots. I shot these at ISO 160, so two thirds of a stop over in a Leica MP with a 50mm Summicron around f5.6 for the most part. And the photos were developed by my local lab, Photo Laboratory in Berkeley, and scanned with a negative supply setup and a Fujifilm GFX camera. So the reason I made the video is because I was really pleasantly surprised by the results. I was expecting, I've shot a lot of weird foreign films and whatnot, and I was expecting kind of that experience where the film was strange but not necessarily particularly enjoyable, like your taste may vary, but I, what I found was an image that was kind of dark with pulled down shadows, lots of mystery and mood, and chunky grain that I thought looked really nice and a film that if it were a bit cheaper, I'd love to shoot quite a bit more of. As far as downsides, I did find that even two thirds of a stop over, the shadows were nearly clipping in some places, so I would definitely not be inclined to push it. And then, although the images, if you don't look too closely, look really sharp because of the texture from the grain, if you zoom in, and I should have already showed you that, you'll see that they're not incredibly sharp, plenty sharp, uh, and if you're shooting 35, you probably don't care much. But so compared to other classic emulsions like Tri-X or HP5, pretty similar to Tri-X, but Tri-X has been updated. So actually, despite the higher speed, I think it's a bit sharper and has less grain. And HP5 is a completely different beast, very flat film. Uh, they're basically nothing alike other than the fact that they're both uh, cubic grain classic emulsions. I think it's easy to get into the spirit of like, Oh well, in 1965, Lee Friedlander was shooting Tri-X, so if I put Tri-X through a Leica in 2021, then I'm going to get the same result. But uh, other than the fact that none of us is Leaf, so the Tri-X of today is quite a bit sharper uh, and possibly different in other ways. And finally, regarding the cost, it is not a cheap film. I think nowadays it's about 14 bucks a roll. You can roll it yourself for around seven dollars a roll. And that is a perfectly reasonable price, but I'm far too lazy to do that. You can also buy it on eBay and I believe get slightly cheaper prices from people who will roll it for you. When I want a film like this with a really pronounced toe and this moody, dark look, I will be inclined to keep shooting FP4 because it's a lot cheaper. But despite that, I really enjoyed this experience with Double X and I would definitely recommend you give it a shot. Buying one roll of it for its silly price isn't going to kill you and you might find you have fun with it.